Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third and final video in a series where we look at ways in which we can get a handle on the complexities of Xcode. In this video, we'll focus on the code editor. We'll look at ways to move around your code and organize it so that you can do a better job of maintaining it in the future. Throughout this video, I'll introduce you to some new keyboard shortcuts, but I'll also be using ones that I covered in previous videos, so make sure you watch those other ones too. Links are in the description below. This video is sponsored by App Figures. App Figures makes tracking the business side of your apps like downloads and revenue a breeze, while also helping you to grow your downloads with very intuitive tools for app store optimization and for competitive intelligence. And it's not just the tools. Ariel from App Figures shares guides, tutorials, and even hosts live streams to teach you how to promote your app. I also recommend checking out his YouTube channel for weekly news about apps. App Figures helps you spend less time tracking and more time developing. Sign up with my code, Stuart3030, to get 30% off your first three months. Links are in the description below. Thanks again to App Figures for sponsoring this video. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. When you're within a code document, you often need to move, refactor, and possibly reference code that might be tied to a particular function or struct. Here are some of the things that I've found that helped me to do that. The jump bar is a very handy way to move around your code. If you click on a class or struct, you'll see a list of all properties and methods in that object. If you select one, you can jump right down to that section in your code. Rather than using a mouse though, you can quickly access it with a keyboard shortcut. And Control 6 reveals that jump bar. With the jump bar revealed, you can type, and the fuzzy filter will zero in on the code that you want. Making a selection will take you directly to that part of your code. If you have a struct or class that contains a lot of code, you should organize it into logical sections. And for this, you can use markers. For example, it looks like I have all my properties at the top of this code, so I'd like to mark that section. And I can use slash slash mark colon and then a dash, followed by some text that will establish a marker. If I control 6 once more, I see that properties is clearly shown with a line above it to denote the start of a section. So let me create two more markers. For this one, I want to denote my setup functions. So I'm going to use mark this time, but I'm going to leave the dash out. And then down a little bit further, I want to create one for all of my functions that designate my gameplay. If I view the jump bar now, I see that gameplay has a nice line above it to separate the section, but not so with setup. And that's why I always like to use the separator version. And that means you use the dash prior to entering your text. Control 6 once more, and we can see that. I did notice, however, though, that some of my code is mixed up. These properties here are in the wrong section. They should be at the top. So I could cut and paste the code and then place it above the setup marker. But with these lines selected or highlighted, I can move the text using keyboard shortcuts. And using Option, Command, and the left square bracket, it'll move that code up line by line, and repeated entries of those keyboard shortcuts will move the code up. And if you want to move it down, you can just use Option, Command, and then the right square bracket. Further down here, I see a function that needs to be moved down into the gameplay section. So let's use that option command right square bracket to move it down. This looks better now. Now, if you don't already have cold folding enabled, I recommend that you do that. And this can be found in preferences, text editing. If I check that box, it creates a ribbon to the right of the line numbers. 
And that's going to allow me to collapse or expand code based on braces pairs. Once it's collapsed, you can easily then move blocks of code by collapsing and selecting either a collapse block to move or by moving other text above or below collapse blocks. Again, I want to get away from using the mouse, so I need to remember keyboard command equivalents that will allow me to fold and unfold different portions. So if you're within some braces, you can use Option Command Left Arrow to fold within that current set of braces. Option Command Right Arrow will unfold it. If you add a Shift key in, Option Shift Command Left Arrow will fold all your blocks of code. And then Option Shift Command Right Arrow will unfold them all. So it's a great way to get a synopsis of all of your functions within your code. You should always comment your code because when you come back months or years later, sometimes you don't remember exactly what you've done. And there are two different ways in which you can comment codes. You can use what I call single line comments, and that's the easiest to do. You can highlight one or more lines of code and use the keyboard shortcut, command, right slash, and it will toggle on and off comments by adding two slashes in front of the line. And when those lines are designated with a comment, the compiler simply just ignores them. Now the trouble with single line comments is that every line gets that double slash in front. So if I want to copy any of the lines, I'll always have to remove those slashes after the fact. And sometimes I like to use code that I've commented out here in another part of my app. So rather than using that single line commenting, I can comment out an entire block using comment markers. So if you start with a forward slash asterisk and then press return, it creates a comment block. And then anything within that comment block will be ignored. So we can use our moving techniques to move codes of block within here to ignore it. And you can also use cold folding if you like to collapse code blocks first and then move the entire code block into a comment section. Sometimes you need to know how your properties, functions, or classes are being used within your project. If you Option Command click on a function or property, you can choose Caller or Callers if there's more than one from the pop up menu that appears. If there's more than one, you're presented with a list of callers from which to choose from and each one will indicate where that caller is located. Let me practice some keyboard shortcuts here that I've covered in previous videos. I'm going to quickly change the simulator to an iPhone 13 Pro. And then I can quickly jump back to where I just was. And let's use the jump bar to get to our enter word function. In this case, when I Option Command click, I'm taken directly to the caller because there's only one of them for this particular function. Let's open another file now using our Shift Command O shortcut. And related to callers is the other side of the coin. If you're at a call site for a symbol, you can jump to where that property or function is defined using keyboard shortcuts. In this file, I want to see where this guesses array was defined. Where is that data model file and where is that guesses property? If I control command click on any term, I'm taken directly to where it was defined. And then I can quickly jump back using the control command back arrow. Let's go down and jump to the definition of the new game function. Another great set of keyboard commands is to be able to inspect quick help for a symbol and drill down into the documentation. For example, I have this share results function in this class. It uses a UI activity view controller. And this is an Apple's UI view controller that I want to get more information on. So I can option click on that symbol and the quick help window will appear. 
And from here, I can drill down further into the developer documentation. And this can be extremely helpful if you want to explore different options available to you. And now, in particular, with Docx being released, you'll be able to find more and more third-party frameworks that'll be creating Apple-like documentation like this that can be accessed in this same way. Naming your properties and functions correctly is important for readability and understanding, particularly if you're in a team. If your properties and functions don't correctly describe the purpose, then you'll have a difficult time coming back to it later and figuring out the intention. Now, the trouble with renaming objects is that there may be multiple callers, so you'll need to make sure that the callers are updated as well. If you right-click and choose Refactor on a particular symbol, you can choose to rename. This will then search through all of your code and highlight all of those instances. And then when you type to rename the selected one, all instances will be renamed as well. Let me quickly switch back again. A close relation to renaming is edit on scope. And scope is the context in which a property or a function is declared. So let me jump down to the set current guess colors function. Here I have a property that's called frequency. And I can rename all instances of that property within this scope by selecting and using a keyboard shortcut. And that is the Control Command E. And it selects all instances of that current property, but only within this scope. So it won't affect any other function that I have anywhere else named frequency. Again, let me just reset that back again. Now you can insert multiple cursors in your code so that when you type, the changes will be reflected at all instances of the cursors. For example, this code used to look like this. I don't like long lines, and I prefer to have my code more readable. So I want to break this code up by the logical AND operators. So I can start and click at my first instances to set a cursor position, and then I can Control shift click at other locations, and it creates an additional cursor. And then from then on, Typing will be applied to both cursor positions. So for example, if I hit return, it enters a return right at that location for both. If you have code that's vertically lined up and you want to insert a cursor at the same vertical position contiguously, well, you can select contiguous sections of the code by holding down the shift option when clicking and dragging. So instead of selecting the whole lines, it's only going to select what you're highlighting. So I could, for example, change all of these vars to lets. Of course, that'll break my code, so I'll change it back again. You'll see some devs who really like to line up their equal signs for all property assignments. I don't tend to do that, but I can see the attraction. And one advantage to this is that you can then use the contiguous selection to just select those property names and perhaps use them in another location for other definitions. There's nothing worse when I'm helping others to see code that's completely misaligned. It's difficult to read and follow. So here's what this code might have looked like. To re-indent your code, you either select all of the code with a command A, or just what you want to re-indent, and then use the keyboard shortcut Control I to re-indent the code. Some developers like to enable spell checking. I'm not a particular fan myself, but if you choose Edit, Format, Spelling and Grammar, Check Spelling While Typing, Xcode will display all spelling errors by marking them with a red line. Now this isn't as bad as you think, because Xcode will recognize and identify camel case properties, so long as each piece is a valid word, like these. However, you see that this one here, BG Colors, Though colors is a valid word, BG is not, so it has a red line marking a misspelled word underneath it. Control 6 will allow you to find the names of properties and functions, but if you want to find something within one of those functions, you have to use the find. So Command F will open up a find search box that will allow you to type something in to locate within that particular document. 
Now, if you can see one instance of the term you're looking for and you want to find the remaining instances, you can select that word with Command E to have that term entered into the search box. And then subsequent Command Gs will cycle through all of the instances of that found word. I always recommend that you enable source control for your projects, because with it in place, you can see what changes you have made since your last commit. So when you make changes to your code, you'll see a vertical blue bar to the left of the edited code. So let me open my statistics file here, and I can see a blue line beside the save stat function. I must have changed the code since the last commit. If I click on the bar, I get the option to view the changes that I made in line. I can also use command click on that blue bar to toggle the reveal and hide of that code. If you prefer to see your code changes side by side rather than in line, you can tap the Enable Code Review button to display those changes side by side. And so long as you haven't committed your changes, you can always discard those changes and revert back to the previous code. I like the changes though, so I'm going to use a Command Z to get back to my changes. And the final thing I want to mention is that you should take advantage of code snippets. Creating your own code snippets for commonly used constructors or functions with placeholders can greatly reduce development time and ensure consistency throughout your project. For example, if I wanted to create a button, I have no fewer than seven different options to choose from. Yet, I always tend to use this one here with the action and label option. So I've created a snippet that is simply btn to choose that option for me, and it creates a label that's a text view with the text highlighted waiting for me to type. Sometimes instead of a text view for the button, I want to use a system image for the label instead of that text view. So I have another snippet that is BTI that'll create that one for me. And again, leaving the string selected for me to replace it with a system image name. Here's a link to the video on code snippets that I've created. Well, I hope that these three videos have given you some tips to help you tame Xcode. I'm sure that there will be a lot of comments about things that I missed or omitted that you may find helpful yourself. You see, the thing is, coding is a very personal thing. You have to find what works for you. And my suggestion is to start slowly and don't try to memorize all of the shortcuts all at once. Pick a couple and consciously try these ones out so that you can develop muscle memory so that it just becomes second nature. Thanks for watching.